I'm a douche tuber and I used a blue light to complement my red shirt because they're on the opposite side of the color scales. And that means I'm a professional and you can trust me. Has Fuji regained our trust with the XS20 versus the competition? I made some notes here. Is it worth looking back into that Fuji vintage jacket? 80s cereal type of lifestyle. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Not gonna lie to you, Fuji has a special place in my heart. I remember going to Thailand seeing my first Fuji X-T3 and it just felt cool. And I was like, that's my system. Aperture with the thing, this, boom, wow. Auto if you want. It ended up being bullshit with the dials, I hate them, but whatever. We've moved past that now with the XS20. So here's the deal. You see this Fuji XS20, it's new and shiny and everybody's like, oh my God, it's so good compared to the bullshit that Canon released with the R100 and the Sony ZV-1 II. And you're like, wow, this is actually good. It's by design, Mitsubishi owns all three. And they're like, here's some garbage. Here's even worse garbage. Here's something that's somewhat not garbage. Oh, it's so good, huh? It's so shiny. Yeah, when you shine a pig with some silver polish, Looks like makeup, but inside is still pig guts. And that's the truth. So there's some things that you might wanna know about this new XS20 that nobody's gonna tell you. Here it is, I wrote notes. 4K60, 10 bit, fantastic. X-T3 already did that. Let's stop acting like that's a new spec. Same 18, 118% crop. So it's the same exact thing, same sensor as the X-T3, but we have a new processor. So it's not exactly an X-T3, it's better, but it matches its best spec. It does 240 frames per second, where the X-T3 didn't. So now we're into X-T4 territory. It's matching the X-T4 specs. Same crop, 129% in 240 frames. So basically what you're getting is a Fuji X-T4 with the processor of the X-H2 and you're laughing because you have better autofocus, maybe better stabe. You lose a battery card slot. That's not a thing. Oh boy, SD card slot. You lose the viewfinder. You got a like a 2 million dot viewfinder. Could you even spot a freaking elephant? in a pool, I doubt it. I just, I hate that so much. It makes it the deal breaker of the century when you were considering this camera for vlogging and wildlife. I just want one camera to do it all. Just put it here, boom, we make a video. Take it outside, I'm vlogging now. Little telephoto lens, okay, we're wildlifing. One camera to rule them all. You're not doing that with this. You couldn't spot a damn thing. Is that in focus? I can't see it. We need at least five million dots, if not the nine million in the Sony a7S III. It's not updated with firmwares ever. What I don't understand is Fuji XS10 did 4K 38 bit, disgusting. And then we upgrade to the XS20 doing 4K 60 10 bit, double the frame rates and two more bits in your coffee. I like those odds. 240 frames per second has not changed though. Why didn't that jump up as well? Like, where's my 480p? It did jump from 8-bit to 10-bit, I'll give you that. You got two bits. I'll two-bit your mom later on, we all know that. The one thing it does that the X-T3 and X-T4 couldn't do is 6.2K open gate. I know some of you are excited for that, but mostly open gate is used by commercials. Companies, like people hire videographers to film their commercials so they can post it everywhere on social media. So these are the people that need the vertical video and horizontal and 6K open gate so great for them because they can put these advertisements on more platforms. That's not my life. Like in real life, it's not really a thing that you want. And 6K is like, nobody needs it. It's over sharpened, it's ugly looking. What would you ever use it for? It doesn't have 60P. So like, what's the point? If it's not slow-mo, it's not usable in my life. So like 30P, 6K, you might as well set the thing on fire. But for the most part, you almost have a baby X-H2S minus the 4K 120P and some of the codecs for much less money 
much smaller size. Not bad. Not bad. It beats the X-T3 and X-T4, and you might even prefer it to the X-H2S due to the size and the money you saved. Not bad. I think the IBIS is improved, but I can't guarantee it. All I can say is I watched a video, some photographer taking pictures of a woman, and then she vlogged a bit with the 14 mil Fuji, and it wasn't waving like my copy did on the X-T4. So like they fixed something and it looked smooth. She wasn't walking very fast. I think she wasn't walking at all. She was just there, but whatever, it worked. So it's like, it's a good re little release compared to the bullshit we've been getting. But it also already existed in parts in all their older cameras. So it's like, I sold my Fuji X-H2S because it wasn't working for my life. The IBIS was jerky. So like, we're not getting anything new, but it's much cheaper. Eh, if I had no cameras and I was looking at getting something in this price range, it'd be tough to beat that little Fuji, I tell ya. The only competition really is the Nikon Z30, which is their oldest piece of tech. They pretend to keep making a new camera, but it's really the Z50. Really, no spec has improved since their first mirrorless, the Z6. Same basic thing. We're still stuck on 120 frames per second on that thing, but it's light. It's much lighter and cheaper. Not much lighter. $962 for that in the wide 12 to 28. Not bad. B and H. Links are down below. For XS10, you need that kit lens. Oh god, the 15 to 45, and then you're still like $1,400 way more and that's a bullshit lens i don't know what you would even use the 14 mil is old and grindy with those autofocus motors i don't know about that 16 mil 2.8 pricey but like for weight wise they're almost identical with that bullshit kit lens at least on the fuji not bad 626 grams for 610 for the nikon hmm mm hmm the only other camera that really comes close into the spec race is the Canon R8, and that's quite pricey, $1,500, and then you would want that 24mm 1.8 for another five. So you're looking at two grand to almost match the specs. 4K 60, but we have no crop. That's the thing, if you're vlogging and you're trying to film yourself, you're doing your 4K 24p outside, and then you switch into 4K60 to run across the street in slow motion, and it's like, uh-oh, it's a little tighter now. 118% tighter. But I, I really wanted to do that in 240 frames. Uh-oh, 29% crop. 129%. At least it's less than the Fuji X-H2S's 138% crop. Bullshit, that thing. I bet you the 240 frames is cleaner on the XS20 than the XH2S because the stacked sensor made the weird elongated noise patterns and that extra crop. I don't know what went haywire in the 240p in that camera, but it was the worst in the industry. I don't know, man. They're all such a hard sell. Every camera these days, like the Fuji, it still has some weird jerky autofocus pulsing. Just like it snaps, it's never smooth. It's mostly because of their lenses probably, but it's so irritating. And then Canon with their auto exposing flashes and waves and it's constantly hunting for exposure. It's like disgusting. You gotta lock off everything these days and the ZV-1 Mark II got worse than the one Mark I. At least we can say the Fuji XS20 is much better than the XS10. Its predecessor, it would, it beat it in every way. We moved up to 10 bit in all frame rates, got 4K 60 instead of 30, improved autofocus and algorithms and IBIS, better handling. Can you save custom modes? Nobody mentioned it, nobody knows. You got a vlog button, touch screen, it's like, okay, it's much better. Fuji improved, that's nice. Mitsubishi allowed it in the Fuji universe, must be nice. I still feel like the Nikon will handle auto exposure and autofocus better. I just feel like lens stabe only is not going to be as nice, but I haven't tested it yet. It might be fine. It's a little more polished, even though it's so old and the specs are completely dated. It's all 8-bit 
nothingness. So it's a good budget option, it just doesn't... I'm waiting for an A7S III killer so I can switch into any system who does that. Pentax, Viacom, I don't care who does it. Just beat my Sony A7S III, HD 480 frames, 4K 240p, 12-bit RAW. Blackmagic, if you want to do it, I'll jump right on that ship. A 4K Pro with a flippy screen? I'm in. I'm in. I'm inside your house. I'm going to leave. How are you doing? Are you buying Cameron Conspiracy's t-shirt? They are on sale. There's no sale. I'll leave. Subscribe for more videos. See you later.